Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another upgrades video on my PWS 216. And before we get this video started, I want to give a huge shout out to this video's sponsor, which is of course the Armories. They are some really cool shops down in the Florida area. I first got introduced to the Armories with no partnership whatsoever. I just picked up my Springfield TRP operator from them. They were one of the very few places that had one and they were hundreds of dollars below the other competitors. So I wanted to get with them, work with them on my channel. And if you're not in the Florida area, they actually also have an incredible website. That's where I found my TRP. And actually throughout the entire month of May, if you're into shadow systems, pistols, you are in luck. They're doing a huge sale all throughout the month of May on those pistols in particular. I really appreciate their support on the channel. Integrity is number one for those guys, and it really comes through as a customer experience. So check them out and thank them for supporting this video. The PWS Mark 216 is back out on the review channel. We got some wild upgrades going on here, and we're gonna talk about them in this particular <laughs> video. So I had these upgrades on my night vision build, and there are a few videos on my channel about that night vision gun. It wasn't necessarily bad per se. I just really was continually not happy with that build primarily because of the Triarc barrel. I bought into those Triarc barrels when they were all the rage, all the bougie AR barrels. It was like 300 bucks when I had got mine. I started getting stuck cases after 500 or so rounds uncleaned. Does that mean the barrel is defective? No, it just is very, very tight. Everything is tight. I just do not see a need for an AR-15 barrel to be so tight that without extreme maintenance and cleaning, you're gonna get stuck cases even with brass cased ammo. So I ended up selling the upper. Again, nothing wrong with it. I just, I, I wasn't too excited about the upper anymore. And I had all of my night vision components just now sitting there, because of course I wasn't gonna get rid of those. And I was looking around and you know, I just thought, why not? Let's do it. Let's make a 16 inch 308 CQB setup for night vision use. What, what better to really, really drive home, really pack the punch within close quarters than ball 308, or if you're feeling spicy like sometimes I am, some spear gold dot 308. I just think that is a very fun situation to think about just because of the sheer concussive blast. It's a little bit of a meme, but at the same time, it's not because at the end of the day, I am able to run this with my Tyon Dragoon, and that's the full-size Dragoon, nine-inch can, and there is little to no flash out of that suppressor, and surprisingly, the gun is hearing safe with that on there. And on top of that, you actually have essentially still a very lightweight package because that Dragoon, although looking ridiculously long, is titanium and very lightweight. So for me, I saw this as a very realistic package. Now, also in today's modern world, you are seeing a lot of the time some level four body armor, some ceramic plates, even some level 3A steel plates. I really like the idea of absolutely smacking a level four plate and carrying a boatload of energy behind that plate. Will it go through a plate being worn by somebody attacking you? Probably not, but again, the concussive, massive dump of energy behind that plate, I guarantee you they're gonna be feeling it and having not that great of a day. The other thing that I love about the Mark 216 is that in the 16 inch configuration, although it is still heavy, it handles scary good, scary good. And let me tell you, if you're not shooting at night and you're not worried about any sort of concussive blast, the tie-on brake in the front, the three chambered brake, if you got that gas setting tuned right, you can dump it 
into the target like it's a 5.56. And again, I just think that is kind of cool. The actual upgrades that I throw on this from the night vision build is going to be my Unity riser here, and then also my EOTech EXPS3-0, so I threw that on there. I also was running some Midwest Industries flip up irons, of course, threw those on as well. I have my Surefire Scout up in the front, and this is of course the Vampire, so it has the capability of having infrared and also white light by a turnable head up here in the front. And then I'm also running my Holosun 321 laser. In the video, you guys will see that similar to, actually identical to how I was running it on my night vision build, I had my front sight flipped forward and the laser aiming module right behind that front sight. And that is really how I would prefer to run a night vision setup. And of course, at the range, was it working? Yes, but the main problem that I ran into was the fact that you have this adjustable gas system here on the 216. I would love to say, after my time on the 216, that there is some sort of magical setting that will run really, really well suppressed and then also really, really well unsuppressed. The more that I shoot this gun, the more that I'm kind of coming to the realization that you really have to be able to adjust that setting. And it's really, let's say, quote unquote, mission dependent on your situation. And the frustrating thing is that when the suppressor is off and it's back down to that suppressed setting, you guys are gonna see a little bit in the B-roll when I was trying to zero this setup that it is essentially a single shot. It just, it is not cycling at all. I was racking it back like a bolt action until I opened the gas back up. And then of course it ran 100% reliably because it is in the unsuppressed gas setting. With the suppressor, if I threw it on in the unsuppressed setting, it was so rough on the recoil. It was ripping right off the rim of the casing and leaving it in the chamber. This is a tall tail sign, especially on an AR-10 of overgassing issues. I could not get to that easily without removing the laser aiming module. Now, of course, it is quick detached, so I was able to just take it off and adjust it and put it back on, but this is obviously not a great idea to retain the zero on your laser. And I know it does not look as streamlined and nice on the left-hand side of the rail because I have to have an additional Picatinny mount, it is actually super practical. It works out well. I didn't have any issues with this running on the side as far as bumping into things or anything like that. Now, the only thing I will say is that in a bag or in a small corner in between like a dresser and something else, this is obviously gonna massively beef out the overall profile of the rifle. But if you can get over the looks of it and you're not putting it anywhere in a compact position, this is gonna work just fine. And actually zeroing of the laser in this position, it's actually designed to be in this spot on the rail. And you can note that by the direction the adjustments are and then also the, where the lettering is for the logo itself. Of course, I could just ditch the front sight and run the laser up top. And I might do that in the future. I just really, really like having backup iron sights. And even though I have the riser and I can't see the iron sights there, I have the ability with this quick detach EOTech to pop it right off, flip up the irons, and I have extra sighting. Yes, this is kind of an insane what if situation to think about, but really just from a practical standpoint at the range, if my battery dies or whatever, I always have a backup sighting system that I can just pop this off, flip up my irons, and I'm good to go. I don't need to take anything off or screw anything back on. So that's the reason why I like keeping iron sights on a night vision build. But you know, I know not many people are huge fans of running something as excessive as a 308 AR-10 type platform in a night vision role. But you know, I think again, there are some practical abilities that this has. Yes, this is more of a what if setup, but more and more these days, I think the battle rifle is coming back out and shining just for the armor that's out there. I mean, you know, again, smacking a plate with a 5.56 is far different than smacking a plate with a 308. So take that for what you will. This is gonna wrap up the upgrades video for this Mark II system. Let me know what you guys think about this setup. Is it a total meme or is it semi-practical? I wanna know what you guys think. And of course, you guys know the deal. I absolutely will get back to you down in that comment section below. 
While you're down there, head up to the description for the ways to support the channel. And as always, stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.